Right, so hello and a warm welcome to our next episode in our special guest series of PCS Pods. I'm Kate Forsyth and I'm the Director of PCS Legal and today I'm joined by Colin Horton who is a property surveyor and also specialises in value and lease extensions. He has also very recently appeared on the popular TV show Selling Super Houses. So thanks Colin for coming in today. No worries Kate, So how did you first get into the property sector? So growing up I... I... I played truant a fair bit, yeah. uh, but not in the way that I was going out on the streets and causing trouble. Um, I used to sit at home and watch Hunter on the Hammer. And oh, I used to watch you? all the property <laughs> shows. I was obsessed with them growing yeah. up. And I knew it was something I wanted to get into. We grew up in kind of like relatively like low income upbringing. I was just my mum, single parent. Yeah. And we had, we got pushed from pillar to post in different rental accommodation. And yeah. it was just calling some of the conditions that we were living in just because we could afford so I had this like burning desire to try and you know get involved in the sector and not, yeah. and not be that landlord or not you know and try, and help, try and help a little bit as you do yeah of course you do um, in fact that's a lot more tricky than, <laughs> <laughs> than you think it is a bit harder than you thought it was going to be yeah and then I was working in a call centre after university uh, after school I didn't really have much aspiration in where I was from and no one really had any you know we got anywhere I was happy to earn a thousand pounds every yeah, year that I was yeah. old and um, and then my mates, uh, mate Joe and Aaron, gone off to University of Portsmouth for an open day. Oh, okay. And they're like, "Cool, mate. That's what we do." And I was like, oh, "I don't know. I'm like working." With them. He's like, "Do you want to come uni?" I was like, um, <laughs> "Yeah, sure." Next thing I know, I'm off to Portsmouth University doing property development, so yeah, marketing. Yeah. Fast forward three years, I managed to nab a job in uh, called an asset manager, and I was like, "That sounds sexy." That would yeah. help the girls, lovely stuff. <laughs> and I managed to work my way up at this company called Peer Management who's part of one of the UK's largest three holders the Regis Group Yeah, and they went from a, like a junior asset manager up to a head of asset management in my like eight years that I was there oh wow and I was learning from billionaires like, I was learning from some of the most creative minds in the country it's a yeah. family office kind of vibe yeah um, I learned how to make money um, and it got to a point now where it was a family company. There was only ever so far that I was ever going to go. Right, okay. Company. Yeah, so it didn't have much progression there then. No. But I was part of an academy of wonderful, wonderful chaps and the bosses yeah. were all incredible. And I told them I was leaving. I went and got a job in London for a bit as a head of valuation at another company. Uh, Realised I could do it on my own. At the same time, I was hosting networking events. And then my old company, Peer, became one of my first clients. Right. And the rest was history. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just, you, you come in there with the idea of trying to make a change, but realistically, you know, you realise property is all about making money and yeah. the actual margins are nowhere near what people think they are. 100%, yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> um, so I see from your company, Hortons, that you specialise in acting for people that are looking to extend um, their leases and stuff. So um, could you explain sort of what your service includes just for our listeners? Yeah, yeah, of course. So um, I'm a lease over form value that's my speciality okay um what people a lot of people don't realize is that when you buy a flat the tenure tends to be a leasehold and what that means is you own that flat for x amount of time yeah it tends to be 99 years as that lease becomes shorter and shorter and shorter your flat becomes less valuable yeah um, and you need to pay to then subsequently extend your lease my job is to either work for the leaseholder okay or work for the freeholder right and negotiate the price that's paid for the lease extension. Right, okay. Uh, unless you've ever had to deal with it, you're not really going to know about it. No, but trust me, if you have come across it, you'd have known you've come across it. Yeah, it it's a bit of a, a niche kind of um, thing there, isn't it? Yes. Um, so you also survey properties, which include residential ones. So when someone's buying a property, what does your service include? And what's your USP for that? Yeah, that's so... Yeah, so... Um, for us, like, we're a multidisciplinary surveying firm. So we have the Hortons, which is the valuation firm. And, yeah. and then we've got Project & Co, which is a big building surveying consultancy. We've got 20-odd surveyors. It's a pretty big entity in the surveying world. Just, you know, yeah. not big in the world sense, but big in surveying. <laughs> and we realised that we can find surveyors. Roper, from my own personal experience, quite isolated in terms of, you know, they're very hard to connect with. They're, you know, they're going around basically telling me everything that's wrong with my house. Yeah. But they'll almost deliver that information with a lack of empathy and a lack of emotion and the concern that that little bit of information may give to the person that they're giving that information to. 
Right. So you might say, oh, there's a little bit of doubt there. To a surveyor, that's nothing. Yeah, but yeah. But to, to, you know, young Jason and Sarah that's buying it, put all their savings to their yeah, first house. Yeah, their first house. That could be all, all they're worried about. Yeah, definitely. So we decided to, you know, we wanted to kind of help as much as we could in that way. And because we are a young team, I think the average age is about 33, 34 in the oh, company. Wow. So, yeah. so it's a young company. Um, we've kind of derived a certain offering that is what we would want and what we'd expect. Yeah. Um, and it's exciting. Uh, yeah. We've got a new one coming up with Your Home, which is part of the Project & Co's uh, main home buyers offering, yeah. which is basically designed to help purchase a property, navigate the murky waters of getting the survey, but just get that information articulated to them in the right way. Also, we're very much aware that we don't want sales to fall through. We, you know, we want to work with the conveyances, we want to work with the mortgage brokers, and we want to work with the agent. Yeah, so definitely. it's just making sure that the whole process runs as smoothly as possible. Buyers know what they're getting themselves in for. But yeah. at the same time, we're not scaremongering them into thinking they've got to pull out. Yeah, definitely. A lot of time, these surveys are ask covering. Yeah. Royal arts covering. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so we just want to make sure that you know people don't waste their money on things they don't need and they don't overtly panic. So yeah. that's why we're here. Okay, brilliant. No, it all sounds good. Um, so what sort of areas do you cover? Is it just Essex or do you do um, nationwide? Or? So in terms of the home buyer side of things, Essex, London, Kent. Yeah. Uh, they're the main ones we'll cover. In terms of lease extensions, we're national. Yeah. Um, some say it needs to be geographically located to, okay. to, to do the surveys. Um, the reason we do the home buyers more locally because that's where our surveyors are. Of course, but yeah, so you've got to travel and stuff, yeah. yeah. But these extensions, we can do them nationally. So, right. um, so, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so from a, or from your point of view, really, what's the best advice that you can give somebody who's looking to purchase a property? Good question. Good <laughs> question. Um, it's a bit of a random one, but it's, don't listen to anyone else. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because when you're buying a property, you can have so many different opinions. Yes, and definitely. And your parents, your in-laws, your parents, your friends, your family, your partner. If you can afford it and it's what you want, then go for it. Yeah. But make sure you just have a bit of due diligence prior to purchasing. And that's making sure you work with great competitors like yourself. Yeah. Um, making sure you have someone you can actually speak to because it, there's nothing worse than having or hiring a practitioner to help you that you don't feel like you can talk to because that's really 100%, bad. Hundred percent. Yeah. I'm all, I'm moving at the moment myself and I'm on my mortgage broker day in. Day yeah. Now. Um, make sure that you plan. So if you are looking to move, make sure your plan is probably twenty four months in advance. And that sounds quite drastic. Yeah. But your finances. No, cars, definitely. Cars and PCP yeah. really, really F you up. When yeah, they do. Get finance they do, definitely. Mortgage. So make sure you speak with your broker and if you have an accountant or someone that looks after your finances way Stop in advance it. of moving. Yeah, definitely. You don't, there's nothing worse than finding a house you want, thinking yeah. you can afford it. You've done a little online card player, but when it comes down to getting a decision in principle, you can't. It's completely different, isn't it? Yeah. Um, do get your survey done. I always recommend getting the survey. Um, when do you recommend getting that done out of interest? So, personally, for me, it's when you're moving forward. So, when you've actually got your official mortgage offer. Yeah. That's when, I'd, that's rec- that's when I'd recommend doing it. Yeah. Um, in terms of what type of survey to get, uh, you've got your level three, which is your more structural kind of survey. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily recommend them for anything kind of under 10 years old. It's not really worth it. Yeah, or yeah. blocks of flats. Again, I don't really think it's worth it. Yeah. Obviously, period homes always get your level threes done. Yeah. Um, anything that's maybe like semi-detached or detached, again, I do recommend the level three. I think they're slightly better. Yeah. But standard stuff like your terrace houses, um, I think level two are generally absolutely fine. And you've got a good gauge. If the property is in good nick and it's looked after, yeah. I think level two is absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, that should flag up most things anyway. Yeah. yeah. And just make sure you budget again yeah. just make sure you've got the money for those costs add up oh they certainly do so they just definitely make sure do. you've done <laughs> done your research <laughs> on how much fees you have to pay out okay so this is quite a controversial um question sure. for me um but what do you think can be done to make the conveyance and industry a better process do you know what i'd love to have and I'm, i'll say this all the time not have to do so many bloody forms i oh, know oh, i no. don't i don't we, we often buy like any one time we've probably got maybe one or two purchases going on the go for like buy to let or yeah. properties. 
always feel out saying forms oh, over no. and over again. And what I would love to see, I don't know how this would work, but is a non like a system where I feel like the form once and that kind of logs in and stays in there and I'm only ever a kind of temporarily yeah. update the thing. The ability to upload bank statements easier would be much, yeah. just a click of a bank feed it would be a lot easier. Because a lot of people, I'm very much someone who has a fear of admin. I don't like anything yeah. administrationally. Um, so anything to kind of make the make customer's life easier. easier. And also, as well, it's just being proactive on the updates. Because that's so much like, if it's my mortgage broker, I'll come back to message me like, oh, hi, Cole, no update at the moment. Yeah. I just thought I'd let you know. Yeah. It means then, a lot more to me than me chasing someone. Yeah, like, when I'm thinking on what's going on. on. Yeah, definitely. So if there's a platform we could check the progress. And yeah. I know people have tried this and it's never really got off the ground, but... I think it could be coming, I think. A lot of... Well, people are working on like upfront information all the time, which is one form between, say, us, the brokers, the estate agents, we're yeah. all working off of one thing, which I think could be helpful. Property logbooks are, are kind of coming, and you know, I know various conveyances have got their own platforms. We've got our own one as well. So hopefully, as time goes on, we should catch up with all the tech, and it'll be be a bit easier. But um, I don't think the conveyancing process will actually change that much though unfortunately uh-huh. but um so have you got any tips for people that are looking to sell property yeah um i actually recommend getting surveyed on yourself on your own oh gaff, really yeah because that way at least you're aware of what might happen and you can remedy it you don't go all the way down the line yeah and then find out and there'll always be some guy's dad saying you know wait till exchange and haggle the price yeah condition. You know, you're, always, you're always gonna you're always gonna have that um, so I do recommend getting that done. Um, I also recommend when it comes to appointing your state agent. Yes, yeah. Um, look at the ones that are selling. It's it's it's, it's quite simple. Go on, right mm-hmm. move. Type do your search, but include sold. So and just look at the ones that are selling and look at the ones that are selling properties similar to yours. Yes. Like I know we've all got preconceived ideas of estate agents. Where I'm from, there's a few there's agency battles. Yeah. You know, and also one thing I'd also say is don't be too precious on the fee that you pay to the agent yeah. because, yeah, you might pay an extra two, three grand on the price, like yeah, on the one percent or two percent, but that you that one they might get you an extra ten or twenty thousand pound. So it's don't be short sighted when it comes yeah. to you know. I really would avoid Deep these under. really low budget agents personally. Just yeah, the online ones. They're not going to get stuff sold. You've got to get someone's going to get the, you know, get these stuff sold. Um, Especially in this market as well, it was probably different, wasn't it? In sort yeah. of COVID times when things were flying off the shelf. Like a purple but, bricks, just, man, yeah, came, yeah, just, but yeah, it dropped off now. Yeah, but now it's a bit different, isn't it? And make sure your house smells nice. That's <laughs> yeah. a massive one. Yeah, and tidy up as tidy well. Tidy up. <laughs> and I think what else did I sell of mine? I when I I sold my flat recently, and I found out who. The, my flat was like a converted sorting office, so it was, okay. it was quite cool. Yeah, but unique in terms of like it was relatively pricey for what it was. You know, it was delving to house money, so I wasn't going to have a huge influx of potential buyers because it was very niche. Yeah, and I found out it was a young lad similar to me. So when he came round, I was like, "Don't make him think that he can live there." <laughs> so I had a car outside. Yeah, come in. I like. Um, I've had like a beef a house music plan. I, bloody, <laughs> oh, I think he works in finance. I've got Bloomberg on, on yeah. the TV. Like, I made him not like, visualise that yeah, he could come and live he there. Could. Yeah, that so, was his life. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I think when just find out who your buyers are and then try and a little thing, but just trying to, you know, tailor the house staging. For, yeah, that's good advice. To make him kind of, you know, think that they could live there. Yeah, no, it's, it's good advice. So, that kind of uh, leads on to the next question. So you've recently appeared in a TV show called Selling Super Houses. So what was that experience like for you? Um, yeah, it was hard. It was really hard because I was trying to run my companies at the same time. Yeah. So the typical day was we, I'd get up at 4 Oh, AM, wow. Work till 7 on the businesses. I mean, you get quite a lot done between 4 and 7. Yeah, to be fair, you, you do. You get quite get, a lot done. You get a lot done in the morning. I then 7 to 8 at the gym to keep sane and fit. And then 8 to 8, we were filming Monday to Friday for oh, pretty much wow. 12 weeks. Yeah. And that was hard. That's long, yeah. And after the first week, I was like, I don't know if I want to do this anymore because it was, we'd have a chat now. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, it's lovely. And then they would go out and do a box afterwards where you speak to camera about the experience. Oh, okay, yeah. And they never tell you what, 
to say that they will influence your answers. Yeah. And how do you think Kate was lovely though? Yeah. Some of the questions weren't that nice. Yeah. And then three or four rounds of it later, you're coming out, oh, Kate's horrible. Yeah. And they kind of change the thing. And I, I, I struggled with that initially. Yeah. And I'm not very confrontational. So obviously they want it to be good television. So that, that I struggled with. Yeah. But you quickly realise that obviously the better TV, the better you might have making money at, you know, at the end. Didn't get paid yeah. any money. So we didn't okay. pay anything contrary to it. That's so, a lot of time involved. A lot of time, no money. Yeah. Um, I made some great friends. I met some really cool people. Yeah. Um, I learned to make sure you watch the car for the, the car, uh, the crew. Yeah. Look after the crew because they want to do the editing. <laughs> yeah. And it's amazing watching yourself back on telly. Like, they... I was worried that they were going to make me look like a bit of a tear. Yeah. But they made me look how I wanted them to. Yeah, I look a little bit ditzy sometimes, but that's made my accent and maybe that's the way I am. But I was authentic and I was myself. Yeah, and that's done, the And I done the show be. and that's, yeah. all, that's all I wanted from the yeah. show. So as of yet, nothing exciting to report. Yeah. Um, but hopefully... Watch your space because we're still... Well, I've still got a couple of episodes left, haven't we? Yeah, we've still got so, two more left. Yeah. Um, so we'll and, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping everyone's enjoying it. It's easy watching, isn't it? It's not. It is easy. I mean, I've I've been watching it myself. I think it's quite easy watching. Yeah, um, I, th- I think you've come across quite well as well, Thank so um, which is good. So, is selling houses something you want to do for the future, or are you going to stick to your lease extensions well, and your selling, surveys and stuff? Selling property, yes, not houses. So, well, potentially there's two. There's two. We're two, investigating two things at the moment, but I've been really pushing uh, the idea of flat, which is a flat only estate agency okay. because. Agents, I find, are very um, unaware of everything that comes with leasehold tenure. Yes, Lease definitely. extensions, building safety act, service charge. I was going to say, acts. brave with the building safety acts at the minute as well. <laughs> so yeah. I was thinking, we've got the infrastructure with my background, what I do. We've got the building, yeah. we've got the building firm. I was like, it's quite a cool brand. It's easy to do. So at the moment, just doing seed round investment at the moment, which okay. is daunting to say the least yeah. when you have to ask people for money and kind of pitch your idea. But we will probably do to four to five hundred lease extensions a year. So there's you know generally selling. Yeah. So yeah. there's 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 a lot. Right. Yeah. That's just that's just from my work and that's yeah. about developers and stuff. So and we did learn a lot on the show and obviously I've got you know exposure of a national television show and selling well, property. So true. and I look like an agent. I sound like an agent. So I might as well give it a go <laughs> and hope for the best. Uh, and it'll fail. I'd rather fail. Like for me, I'm a big believer in mistakes are absolutely fine. Regrets oh, you, you can't have any regrets in life, yeah. definitely not. So, so you might as well. Especially you've got age on your side as well. So, yeah, it's all good. Well, still, still, still young. Right? Yeah, <laughs> still yeah, young. Yeah. Um, so, what's next for Colin? So, you just mentioned about you know, your state agency thing. Is there anything else you've got in the pipelines? Joe, you know one thing I really want to do is I've just hired the head of animation at Holland to take over from me to do my yeah. today to free up some time to. To do something, I've got my own podcast, which I, which I do. Um, I host something called the Pro Party, which is okay. probably the industry's largest networking event. Uh, we had 300 people on a boat about four weeks ago, oh, which wow. was really cool. That sounds good. Uh, about to confirm the next one for February, which aimed for 700 people. Oh, brilliant. So I hope turn out to a little side business. But what I really want to do is I really want to do a little e-commerce business. Is what oh, I really, really want to do. Yeah, I just want to test my marketing skills. Yeah, but it's yeah. just marketing. And it's either going to be cold pillow <laughs> right because I think there's a real gap so I'm always looking for the cold side of the pillow yeah always yeah. and I don't actually need the cold pillow <laughs> case but I need to just convince the world that I'm selling a really cool pillow case. yeah so I was going to call it cold case and then just run it off TikToks and social yeah, so I'm, I'm just speaking to manufacturers on that at the moment and that's just something about the making of money I mean it'd be great if it does well but it's more just a I'm not very good at academia and sitting down and learning at uh, reading or whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to do something, make the mistake. Or, yeah, but you're, you're like probably that. at a stage in your life, though, where you've, you know, you've built up enough of your business that other people can take some of that over yeah. and you work on something else. So. But yeah, that, and that, I'm just referring my new house, which yeah. will, it's terrifying because yeah. I haven't put a shelf up. So um, <laughs> I've got people coming to do it, but that's... See how that goes, and then just I don't know. I just enjoy life. Life's so short. Yeah, and I think 100%. we just need to make friends and enjoy yeah. what we do. Enjoy stuff like this. I enjoy doing the podcast and yeah. people and stuff. So, 
So yeah, brilliant. Let's watch your space then. Hope so. So I've got lot lots to, to look forward to from you anyway. Yes, and just follow me on LinkedIn for if you just want someone to actually get to talk normally on LinkedIn, then I'm your man for that. I have to say you do stand out as that. Um, you know, I've I've sort of read your post all the time because it's actually, you know, quite interesting rather than just the usual you know, having a bad day in the office. So it's good. So I'm lucky. So I go gym every time, same time every day at six. Yeah. And I'll get there at 5.45 before it opens. And every day I've got that 15 minute slot. Oh, have you? And that's when I do my little post time. time. Yeah. But I find it quite cathartic. And I'm also not a narcissist, that's what I'm going to It's nice to get likes. (laughs) Yeah. yeah, sweet. (laughs) So um, I I think the the world needs to, um, I think survivors need to, have their perception changed a little bit? I think they're, they're like, there is more to the old male power and style mentality. Yeah, I definitely. They're trying to just raise a bit of awareness and try and change the game as much as we can and just help out as many people as we can and not be at the beck and call of how that Savar felt that day if you want to down value something. So we're yeah. just trying to do our little best. Brilliant. All sounds fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming in today. No it's been, been great to talk to you. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens coming up. Love it.